So in this video, we'll talk about the most interesting generative AI. We'll see that uh, how things uh, work and with relevance to this AI 900. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so first thing is that, uh, okay, how the gen AI is working, right? You ask a question and it, it gives an output, right? So these are, that is, this is the main basic concept called as tokenization. So how it works is this tokenization, which they have explained is, let's say you have said that I heard a dog bark loudly at a cat. Okay, this is a complete sentence. So there would be number assigned to all of them, right? And then somebody can say, write that I heard a cat. Then the number would be one, two, three, eight, right? So if you see this is number, so using all the data that was fit, okay, they have assigned a number to that. And then they plotted that number on a multi-dimensional graph to see uh, which all things will lie there, right? And then they will see which is coming closer. For example, this dog and cat are used at multiple places together. Then uh, it will be plotted here, right? So this is like the coordinates, 331. It is coming at this place uh, on the graph. Okay, dog is coming here, cat is coming here. So if we see that cat and meow are near and dog and bark is near. So they plotted all that stuff on this graph and then they feed it to a model to uh, do the prediction. Like for example, I heard a dog, what can come next? Okay, so when it has passed through all the various things and it, it has found that a dog will bark, right? So here, if you see that they are showing the same thing, I heard a dog bark. So that's how the model make the prediction. It divides, it does the tokenization. Then the embeddings are created and then a weight is assigned to all of this. And then it predicts that, okay, this could be the possible answer in this situation. Okay, so we have understood uh, here about this tokenization, right? Like decomposing this and plot the word in a 3D space. So this is just for a simple example, but it could be XD where X could be 20 or maybe 20 lakhs also, right? So that uh, you contextually uh, uh, make the similar things together. So that is what embeddings it, right? And uh, so there are two modules that generally work in this generative pre-trained transformer, right? We use the name GPD. So there are two major modules, encoder, where we create this embeddings and decoder where you predict that what can uh, come next. Okay, so this is the main part of uh, this Gen, Gen AI. Let's see some other things. So what it does is it's try to imitate human behavior, right? Using what? Machine learning, okay? So that is the core of uh, the all the Gen AI part, the machine learning, which it has learned with the data, okay? And it does not... Uh, like it's not a if else condition, right? That it will produce only this. It, it produces uh, many times different, different uh, uh, output for the same question. Okay, and it's it's based on large language models. So there is a input uh, given to it and it processes the natural language and it gives you the output. And there are various kinds of models are there. It's not that only a single model is there. So various models, some model can predict images very well, right? Some can predict a particular text. There could be one model which might be trained on specifically on medical data, right? So there are lar large language model that has been fed into this, right? And what it does, right? It can do sentiment determination, right? There are questions where they will ask you that, okay, whether the review was positive or negative, right? So, but people write in natural language, right? So reading that, uh, Gen AI, right? Generative AI can determine that whether it is a positive review. It can summarize text, right? That you might be using also. And uh, you can try this on YouTube videos as well, where it summarizes text, right? Based on the, the speech, uh, based on the uh, transcript that is there, right? It can compare multiple resources and it can generate new language, right? So here it's told that that uh, it works on the transformer models. So in GPT, T is transformer, right? Generative pre-trained transformer. So transformer has two components. One is the encoder, which we saw below and decoder. So if you see that, that the Google is, it's possible even to use even one component. So Google uses this 
whereas GPT uses the decoder model, which generally predict that what would come uh, next, right? And it is uh, trained on a very large data. That's why if you see that it has knowledge on uh, most of the things you asked to it. So we read about tokenization, embedding, attention, right? So now uh, if you want to use it, I'll show you some diagrams also. So using Azure OpenAI, you can create your own chat playground where your data would be uh, totally safe, right? Not like ChatGPT where it uses the model, right? In this, like in Azure OpenAI, in Azure, you can create a service Azure OpenAI and you can select some of the parameters here. And then you can ask question, you will uh, get the response like this way you see in chat GPT. And here you can, this is system message. You can give a message to prevent things, right? So for example, you can give a PDF and uh, tell the open AI service to give the answers only from this, not from internet or not from anywhere else. So this messages can help like whatever uh, you put here, it will take care of that to not give uh, any answers. So here you can set the context. This is called as uh, system message. And also they have uh, shown the example of that now Copilot is embedded in various software. For example, in uh, PowerPoint they have shown and it's part of now many uh, software. And here the example of GitHub uh, VS code is written where if you write that, uh, find all images without alternate text and give them a red color. So as soon as you start typing the function, it auto completes the code. So this, these are an example of Copilot. So first party and third party, two types of Copilot they have explained and so first part is like which, which Microsoft has developed and, and others are third party where they use this as a service and uh, do things for them like and and if you write better prompts you will get uh, better results right i just now show you the system messages that we can set so for example you can tell that you respond in a cheerful and friendly manner so that uh, those emotions and all does not comes into chat gpt and it might reply in a maybe in a rude way Right. So all these things can be set. We can set the expectations and constraint that only give such kind of data, don't give any wrong data. Right. So there was an example given that somebody should not use to ask that how I can how I can have generate poison and from the normal food. Right. So we have to uh, that's why we have responsible AI also in picture that these things uh, should not happen. Right. So if you write specific prompts, then you'll get better answers. So there is a, this word I have written wrong. It is short, zero sort learning. And so here, what will happen is, if you tell in a particular way, right? For example, that the example is given, visit, visit the castle in the morning before crowd arrives. So if you add something and then ask a question, it will, based on your input, it will try to, give the answers in uh, those format or in that way. So that is called as one shot learning where uh, that thing was not previously fed into it, but it sees the format you give and it uh, gives the output in that way. And uh, this is responsible approach is written that so that you can develop or use things. So identify the harms, for example, that poison thing that I gave you and, and measure it that how uh, maybe how harmful that is if there are any problems that are available, right? And solve it at various levels, right? So chat GPT or these models have the training data, right? So if you put the right training data, there are less chances of getting the wrong answer, right? Or you can solve it at the application level, right? Where the output is coming, or you can even write a wrapper on top of it, which will, which can stop this kind of things, right? Just we see at our, the various layers, we have in networking, right? Some websites are blocked at the ISP level, some are blocked at India level, some you can block that your router level as well. So there are various layers by which you can uh, make these models better and uh, mitigate the problems that can happen, right? Even if let's say uh, the wrong data was fed to the model, right? But where you are receiving the output in between, you can place some layer which can filter that out and does not give 
wrong data to it, right? So that's mostly I have covered what I have taken the notes about uh, responsible AI, and you can deploy using Azure Open AI your own personal chat GPT service where you can uh, select it out that which model you want to use and uh, you can use even the latest gen 4 as well 